everyone. Welcome to another episode of So What? This is Ellen March, and you are on the Sulky Facebook page. Thank you for joining me today. Today is a big day here in our country. It is election day. I hope you have all voted or you are planning to vote today. It's exciting stuff. Um, but I think we might need a little distraction today. So why not go into our sewing room and start planning some projects for the holidays. Why not? There's no time like the present. Um, I just realized that my chat function here is not coming up, so bear with me a moment while I get that going. Um, speaking of chatting, make sure that you are commenting, liking, sharing, all that good stuff on today's post because I have an awesome giveaway as usual. Uh, today's giveaway is our brand new Mary Chris Mouse machine embroidery palette. Isn't that cute? So if you are unfamiliar with our machine embroidery palettes, a palette is basically a bundle of thread. So this is 10 spools of sulky rayon thread, and you need all 10 colors to create this really cute Chris Mouse design collection. So there are 10 embroidery designs in the collection, and they're all these very, very cute little mice. And there's gifts and um, little uh, Christmas tree and things like that. So. Uh, these are large scale designs, so I want to say they're about four to five inches tall, and then their widths vary proportionally um, depending on, you know, the little, uh, the, the type of mouse that you're using, whether it's the girl mouse with the girl mouse with the gift or the little Santa mouse, things like that. So super cute. Um, and sorry, bear with me. I'm still trying to find my chat here. It has disappeared on my screen. <laughs> so I will get to all of your questions. Be sure to keep them coming in and uh, I'll find out what's going on here. Um, so today, the project we are going through, like I said, is a cute little Christmas stocking and it features the designs I was just showing you from our Merry Christmas design collection. Uh, so we're going to go through how to create those designs in the hoop of our embroidery machine. Um, you do have to have embroidery capabilities in order to do these applique designs in the hoop. Uh, but if you don't have an embroidery machine, you will still learn lots of tips and techniques for creating this cute little stocking. All right. Um, I'm sorry, everyone, bear with me. Again, I'm really trying to figure out <laughs> what happened to my little chat. Okay, we'll get there. All right, so while I am still working on that, I'm gonna try and talk about our fantastic faux leather Clara bag video cast. Now, if you are familiar with our free webinars, we usually do them about every month. Um, it's basically like taking a free class from a designer, quilter, sewer, some industry professional. Sometimes I put them on for Sulky. And never fear, our free webinars are not going away. We are still going to do those throughout 2021. And you can always get that content. For the video cast, however, we are going to be showing you all the sewing and techniques. Everything will be live on camera. Now, normally for our webinars, they are live audio, okay? So you do hear us speaking to you live, but you don't see any of the actual sewing in front of you. It's a PowerPoint presentation. There's still a lot of great information to be had there. But in order to bring you live streaming video content for these webinar type classes, we upgraded our education platform. Um, we're offering multiple camera views, live chat Q&A, so much fun stuff. 
and we are starting that next Tuesday, November 10th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time will be our first ever video cast. And you need to register for that. Spots are limited, so make sure to get your spot. It's $5.99 to attend the video cast. And it will be like getting a state-of-the-art sewing lesson in the comfort of your own home. So in the description for today's post, you might have to click see more to see everything that I posted today because there are a lot of links. <laughs> uh, you will find the registration for the video cast. So make sure to register today. We have kits available already. I will show you that project in just a moment. I'm going to try one more thing to try and get my chat to populate. And, oh, here we go. I still don't have it. But anyways, keep the chat coming because I will, oh, I've got some of the chat. Yay. <laughs> All right, now I can answer your questions as they come in, hopefully. I have no idea why that would just disappear on me. It's just bizarre. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about, I'm all discombobulated now. All right, back to the video cast. I just want to show you the bag. If you missed the So What from last week. I always post the So What in its entirety on our YouTube channel. You can also come on back to Facebook and watch the whole thing in its entirety. And I debuted the bag that we're going to be doing for the video cast last week, but I just wanted to show you all again if you happened to miss it. We will be working our way through this Clara bag. So it kind of looks like this little clutch, right? But it's actually much bigger and holds a lot of stuff. And it has all these different strap options, which is what I think is so cool. So you don't have to have the strap at all. You can take it off entirely. There's a little swivel clip here. And you can use this like a little clutch, all right? Or you can keep this on and have either a shoulder strap or a longer crossbody style strap, depending on where you put this little piece of hardware here. So you can slip this off, move it all along the strap, and the strap is completely customizable. The other thing we're going to customize is the embroidery that you choose to put on your bag. So you can choose this beautiful butterfly, and I'm gonna show you a really great technique for embroidering dense designs onto faux leather, which is usually a no-no, but I have figured out a way to do it and I'm gonna share it with you in the video cast. Also, when you register for the video cast with your $5.99, you're going to get an embroidery design collection for free as a thank you for coming, thank you for registering. And the uh, embroidery collection is this scroll alphabet design. Um, you get uppercase, lowercase, all the numbers, and in three sizes. And again, this is a really large scale font. You'll get three inch, four inch, or five inch to uh, embellish your bag, embellish all sorts of holiday things. Um, the, this scroll, these scrolly letters are really, really great for holiday personalization. So you'll really love that. And we've got the bag in this mustard color as well as a black bag that just fell on the floor um, <laughs> with gold hardware. So there are lots of options. The kit is already available at the video cast price. Um, it's a really, really great deal. You get tons of sulky thread, all the stabilizers that you need, all the faux leather fabric and lining and hardware and zippers, and it's all included. So we're gonna have a great time. All right, so that is the video cast. And I'm just trying one more thing to populate my chat. Um, sorry, that's so irritating. Um, all right, let's get to the task at hand, which is this cute stocking. Now, while I was prepping for today's So What?, 
it occurred to me that this would be so cute for a little pet stocking, right? If you have a cat, you could make it a little mouse stocking for the holidays. How cute. So the stocking is a little on the smaller side. I mean, if you have kids, you probably have much bigger stockings to hold all of their loot. Um, but I think it's a cute little petite size. Um, it's big enough to get your hand in there and to hold plenty of goodies. But this would be a really cute pet stocking. Anyways, I digress. All right, so I made my stocking out of a denim fabric and I just really thought that the design popped really nicely off of this dark denim. So that's why I chose it and it I had it in my stash. So it does have a little bit of a stretch to it, okay? It's like a pretty good quality denim that you would use to make your own jeans, um, which I still have never gotten around to making my own jeans. Someday that will be a challenge that I that I take on. <laughs> not today, not today. At any rate, I had this great stretch denim and I thought it would look really cute with this stocking. And then you need a lining fabric, dive into your stash, find something that's, you know, festive. You need some scraps of fabric for the applique itself. So you can see that um, a lot of this design is actually fabric scraps. And then you could see the portions that are thread. So you need a little bit of gray for your mouse body, or you can make a tan mouse or a white mouse, whatever mouse color you prefer. You need some pink for the ears, that type of thing. It's all listed in the color chart that you will get with the design collection that comes with the machine embroidery palette. All right. So not only are we doing the applique in the hoop, we are also going to semi-construct the stocking in the hoop as well. And what I decided to do was, we have this free project at Sulky that is this in the hoop stocking. The whole thing is made in the hoop. The white stitching that you see on that stocking is all thread and the stocking outline and all of that is constructed in the hoop of your embroidery machine. It is an in the hoop design by Pamela Cox. So I thought, how can I combine our Merry Chris Mouse with that in the hoop project? So what I did was I took a look at the components of this design. Now, this is that front stocking piece, what it will look like when you take your fabric out of the embroidery hoop to start constructing the lining and putting it all together. Well, the lining portion of this in the hoop embroidery design is just that stocking outline. And the stocking outline is your stitching line, not your seam allowance. So what I did was I brought only the lining design into my embroidery machine. And then I built the rest of the stocking design on top of that lining design while it was in my machine. I didn't use any software to do this. I did it all on the machine screen. All right, so this is the backside of that front piece. You can see all that thread that is involved. Like I said, I eliminated all of those stitches and I used only the lining portion, <clears throat> excuse me, of the design. Now to get all the how-tos for this project, it is on the Sulky blog and I uh, put the link in the description of today's post so you can see it. Um, the reason I have this picture up here is to show you that the outline of the stocking, again, is the stitching line, not your seam allowance. So you need to make sure to have extra fabric beyond because you're going to mark your seam allowance beyond that stitch line. So really, we're using that lining design as a guideline, uh, not only for our stitching when we're going to assemble the stocking, but also to place our embroidery in the right 
position along the stocking. All right, so first things first, I used Sulky Sticky Plus to uh, build my stocking components, all right? Sticky Plus is a tearaway adhesive backed sticky stabilizer. So we're going to hoop it with the paper side facing up. So it says Sulky Sticky Plus. We're looking at the grid lines. And then my new favorite little tool, which is the Filmoplast slitting pen from Sulky. Um, we are also calling it the Sticky Plus slitting pen. This has this really, really sharp point on it. And instead of using a pin to score that paper and reveal our sticky adhesive on the stabilizer, we are going to use this slitting pen because it's not going to go through the paper like a pin can or your scissors or whatever you are normally using to score that paper inside the inner hoop ring. So I discovered this little tool a couple of weeks ago, I showed you all, and it has really <laughs> revolutionized uh, my hoopless embroidery techniques. So I highly suggest grabbing one of these. It's, it's a really nice little tool to have. All right, so we're preparing our stabilizer, and here you can see um, I made this project before I knew this little guy existed. So that is me scoring the paper using a pin. Um, but you have to be really careful when you do that that you don't go through all the layers because if you do, then you won't have any stabilizer left in the hoop, right? It'll just be a hole and you'll have to rehoop and use more stabilizer. All right. So then we tear away that paper backing inside of the inner hoop. And what we have left is our sticky surface. Now, we can put our fabric in place to embroider. Now, what I also used, because I was working with this denim that had a little bit of stretch to it, is I put a layer of Sulky Fuse and Stitch on the back of my fabric before I put it on the Sticky Plus. Now, Fuse and Stitch is a fusible tearaway. And I know those things sound so weird when you put them together. You want to fuse it very, very lightly so that you are able to tear it away after embroidery. But in the case of a stocking like this, you could actually just leave it on the back of the fabric and it would act as a layer of, excuse me, of interfacing while you are constructing the stocking. So either way, you can tear it away or you can leave it in place. And like I said, the reason I used that fusible tearaway is because the fabric had a little bit of stretch to it. So that means when we're embroidering a dense design like this with lots of stitching, that the fabric is going to wanna stretch when the needle is penetrating it uh, so many times to add all of that thread, all right? So the fusible tearaway is going to prevent that fabric from stretching. So if you're using a fabric that doesn't have any stretch, just a traditional woven fabric, or even a thicker denim fabric, you could get away with just using the Sticky Plus and it would be stabilized fine. All right. Now it comes time for placing your mouse embroidery inside of that lining stitching. So I imported the lining design and you can see the outline of it in the hoop. I also wanted to mention that's a really large hoop. Okay, I used a 360 by 260, just making sure, 360 by 200, excuse me, hoop to build this design. So you want to make sure that you move your embroidery machine so that the embroidery arm doesn't hit the back of your wall or anything else while it is stitching. When you're using a big old hoop like that, you need to make sure that it has room to groove while you are stitching out the design. So once you get the lining design 
onto your machine screen, then you can add the mouse of your choice or your gift box or your um, Christmas tree, whatever design you wanna put on there. There's lots of mice to choose from. This is the girl mouse and I chose it because I was making this for my daughter, Emma, and she picked out this mouse for her stocking. As you can see, when I brought it into the machine screen, it doesn't quite fit in the stocking perimeter. So that lining stitching is a great guideline to place the design in the right orientation, at the right angle where you want it to, how you want it to look when it's hanging, um, and also sizing it properly. So I had to size her down a little bit so that her little hat was going to fit in the stocking perimeter. So then I started messing with, do I want it up higher on the stocking? Do I want it down lower so that her feet are closer to the toe? Um, do I want her to go straight up and down? Do I want to put her at an angle? So I started messing around with the layout until it was where I wanted it to be. Now keep in mind, I also put a name at the top of the stocking. So you want to um, think about those proportions too while you're placing your mouse design in the hoop. And also, again, just know you're going to add your seam allowance beyond that outer stitching line, but you still don't want your design right up against those stitches. You wanna give it a little bit of room. All right, so then I started building the name and I just chose a built-in font, wrote out the name. Um, once I had her whole name up there, then I combined all the letters into one design. You could see I highlighted all the letters and made that, that name one design so that it wouldn't stop after each letter. Now, you certainly can do it that way um, and just keep the same thread color in your machine, but I just find it easier to just combine those letters into essentially one design. Now it's important to note, depending on the font that you're choosing, you may have to space your letters closer or farther apart um, for a nicer, better read. Sometimes when we import, especially a scripty font, um, even if your letters are equidistantly placed, they look off just to the naked eye. They look, they don't, they don't look equidistant. So you have to kind of play with it to get your letters or your name uh, nicely placed together. All right, so then I also put my name at the same angle as my mouse. Um, and that is so, you know, your, your stocking doesn't hang straight up and down, right? It hangs at a little bit of an angle once it's on your mantle. Um, so you can put your name so that it's going straight across your stocking upper edge. You can do whatever you want. If you have a longer name, you could also put the name going the long way and then make your mouse a bit smaller. You can really just play with it on your machine screen until you get it where you want it. All right, so there is where I ended up with the spacing of my design, making sure I had enough room at the top for seam allowance and, and turning my lining and all of that good stuff and placing my mouse so that, um, you know, it's a little bit farther down from the name, that type of thing. So then you're ready for your stitch out. And this is where we are going to get into applique embroidery designs. And I really wish I could get my chat here so that I could address some of your questions. I've been seeing them coming in. Um, let's see here. <gasps> Huzzah! We have the chat, folks. I, I have no idea what was going on, but here we are. I see all of your lovely comments. Um, and yes, okay. Thank you for bearing with me. All right. Crystal says, just when I think I have every kind of stabilizer, I know there's always another one that you need. <laughs> 
All right. So if anyone has, okay, questions regarding the design thus far. Crystal is saying, what about splitting the design? Um, if you're talking about the mouse, um, uh, I mean, I suppose you could split maybe the top of the mouse from the bottom portion using software um, if you wanted to do multiple hoopings. But if you are going to stitch your stocking perimeter in the hoop, you do need that larger hoop. And you certainly don't have to use that stocking outline um, because that, like I said, is really just our placement guideline for stitching out the rest of the design. And then I used it as basically my pattern outline. And I'll show you that in just a sec too. Um, so you could just embroider this part and then cut out your stocking later. We have a different stocking pattern at sulky.com. If you go under our free project resources, you'll find a different stocking design and you could use this same Merry Christmas design collection and create a different stocking that's not done in the hoop. And that way you wouldn't need to have a giant hoop that accommodates that entire lining stocking design. Okay. D is saying, I love sticky back stabilizer, but it gums up my needle. Any hints? All right, so I don't have this problem and I use, uh, I mean, Sticky Plus is like my go-to stabilizer. Um, sorry, extreme close up. If you do have problems, however, we have, I have two suggestions for you. One is you can use a little bit of sewer's aid and place this on your needle before you embroider. Tiny little dab, slide it down the needle shaft and then thread your machine and it will last probably the entire stitch out. It is a uh, water-based uh, lubricant, so it's not going to put any oil or anything like that onto your fabric. And um, it's it's uh, it works it works really well to help you know your needle glide through that sticky stabilizer. Another thing we have are organ anti glue embroidery needles. All right, anti glue needles, um, and you could try those as well. Like I said, I don't have a problem with it gumming up my needle, but you also want to be sure you're changing your needle often. Okay, so especially a stitch out like this, lots of thread here. This is a large scale design. This is a big project. I would use a brand new needle for this and then I would get rid of it when I'm done and swap it out with a new needle. So make sure you're changing your needles often. You'll be amazed at the quality of your stitch out just improves dramatically when you are changing your needles often um, for every new project, that type of thing. Oh, Steve says, I also wanna make jeans someday. Someday, you know, I, I have the confidence to make the jeans. I'm just not confident that I will love the fit afterwards. And so, uh, you know, I have, I have some trepidation about making my own jeans. I don't want to go through all of that and then not like how they fit. All right. Okay. What software are you using to adjust the size of the design? So for this project, I did everything on my embroidery machine screen. I didn't bring anything into a software program. If you want to adjust the size of your mouse uh, beyond or below 20% of the original size, you will need to bring it into software in order to do that. That is because your embroidery machine is not going to adjust beyond that for density and stitch count. So if you try to go below or above 20% of the original design, your stitches will either be too dense or too loose and you won't have a quality stitch out. If you bring it into software to do that, 
most software will automatically adjust for those things and either add in additional stitches or take some out uh, to, uh, you know, fill or basically make the design less dense so that you're able to stitch it at those sizes. So I have tried a couple of different softwares over my career, let's say, uh, lots of different softwares actually. And the one I think is the most user-friendly and intuitive softwares is Creative Drawings. They have, um, they come out with an update every year. I have Creative Drawings 10 and I feel like it is, it's just very intuitive. It's um, easier to learn and it's independent of any machine brand. So um, I really like that. I've also used Premiere Plus um, because, you know, I use a Husqvarna Viking Designer Epic 2 and that software works very well with my machine. So first I would consult with your machine manufacturer to see what software they recommend with your machine brand. Um, they will just play really nicely together. And you can also, uh, if you're looking around for software to purchase, you can ask for trial versions. A lot of them, if not all of them, have trial versions where you can play around. Um, and depending on what you want to do, whether it's digitize your own artwork or just manipulate design sizes, or um, split apart designs and things like that, you'll find the right software for you. So, and, and they're, they're very helpful and there to help you figure out the software that's best for your needs. So really, really use all those resources uh, when you are making a decision like that. Okay, Lori says, is Sewer's Aid available at Sulky? Yes, it is. So while you're getting your really nifty Filmoplast slitting tool, uh, you can grab up some Sewer's Aid. And we also have the anti-glue needles at sulky.com. So if you just search anti-glue, you will find them as well. All right, Patricia says, when I use sticky stabilizer, I use an alcohol wipe after so many stitches. Um, I'm assuming that you do that on the needle and if that works for you, that is fantastic. I've never used that either. I go to my trusty Sewer's Aid um, if I have a problem. Um, but normally I use Sewer's Aid if I'm working with a metallic thread for high speed machine embroidery. The Sewer's Aid um, just kind of reduces a lot of friction that is produced by those high speed designs when your metallic thread is you know, running through the needle at such a high speed. So um, it's good for a lot of different applications. Okay. Oh, and Lorraine says, do you offer the scoring pin for sale? Yep. Sulky.com. You will find it there. Add it to your cart when you're grabbing your video cast kit <laughs> and make sure you have that on hand. All right. Paula says, how do I get the stocking outline on the screen of the Epic 2? So the stocking outline is an embroidery design. So if you go to the blog post that I linked to in the description of the Facebook post today, you'll find the, the blog post link and it will give you the directions for getting the lining design. So that's a design in and of itself. Then uh, you'll get your Merry Christmas collection with purchase of your machine embroidery palette. So again, that is the giveaway today, the machine embroidery palette. Um, I'll show it to you on the screen again because it's so cute. And that's our giveaway today. That's how you get these really, really great um, Chris Mouse designs. These were digitized by uh, Xander Shaw of Embroider Shop. So we put together this great thread collection. You need all these threads to create these designs. So make sure you're liking, loving. I even see um, a sad, angry face. That's fine. I can take it. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the applique portion of the design. All right, so if you've never done 
applique in the hoop of your embroidery machine. It's such a great little invention because your appliques are cut after your embroidery machine stitches around them. And then you want to use your nifty little, and I'm just gonna grab them really quick, applique scissors to get up close and personal to your stitching line. So you wanna use these duckbill applique scissors so that you can cut very, very close to that stitching line without nicking it. So applique designs have pretty much three sort of stitch types to create the applique. Your first stitch is going to be your placement stitch for your applique fabric. So it's essentially an outline stitch that shows you where to place your fabric in the hoop. And you can see right here on this image I have, um, this is the stitching, or excuse me, the fabric for these little portions of the mouse body, all right? And you place your fabric over your placement stitches. And what's really, really helpful, dun da da dun the KK2000. This is our temporary spray adhesive. Um, I find it does not gum up my needle, but again, use those tips if you're finding that it does. It's a, it's a very lightweight mist and it's temporary and you can reposition things and it's air soluble. So after a couple of days, it disappears with no trace. So it's not like a sticky adhesive that you're going to have problems, um, you know, leaving a residue behind uh, your applique fabrics. So spray your little applique pieces, put them over that those placement stitches, then you'll do your tacking stitch. Your tacking stitch secures those applique pieces. Oh, there's me showing the <laughs> KK2000. Then you'll do your tacking stitch. After the tacking stitch, that is what secures those fabric pieces. Then you will cut away the edge of your applique pieces close to your stitching line. The third part is the satin stitch outline. And that is what covers and conceals all of those uh, fabric edges, all right? What I find very helpful is before your satin stitch outline, have a lint roller on hand and just swipe it over your fabric pieces because after you cut them, you could have some little frayed edges. And if you do your satin stitch outline over those little frayed edges, they might be poking out of the thread a little bit and you'll have to do some trimming after the fact. So to kind of get ahead of that, just swipe um, your fabric surface with the lint roller, then do step three, which is your satin stitch outlines. So you're going to follow suit with every portion of applique in this design. So there we've got our little face and we have our little body going on. This is another applique piece you can see for the center of the little belly. And so you're just layering your next applique pieces. This is a tacking stitch. You can see it's tacked the fabric in place. This is right before you're going to trim away with those applique scissors. And actually I, I put the duckbill under the fabric and the straight edge of the scissor over the fabric. Now. The reason this photo is showing something different is because I wanted you to be able to see that duckbill edge. So it's really for photo purposes. And um, there you go. <laughs> All right, so there's our fabric that we trimmed away with the applique scissors. You see I got very, very close. And you've got a satin stitch edge coming up. Now at this point, it's not as thick as it's going to be 
when you do the final, final sort of beauty stitch. So don't get nervous. All of those little satin stitches are going to be more prominent and even a little bit wider as you move through the design. But right now we're just tacking all of those or securing all of those uh, raw fabric edges. All right, so this is also where you get to use all those little bits and pieces of cute fabric scraps that uh, you've, you know you're gonna use it for something, right? So I just went into my stash, I found a cute little holiday themed, um, you know, scrap for the little dress and I it just worked perfectly. And I happened to have just enough to also create my little stocking loop, hanging loop. So if you can coordinate those things, great. If not, just go with a color scheme, make it scrappy, and it'll be fun. All right, so again, we're layering those applique pieces. We're just building and building on that same little mouse. Okay, so once your entire design is stitched, you'll take your stuff out of the hoop. So you've got your sticky plus underneath, then I have my uh, denim fabric that has the fuse and stitch on the back, and I've got my design. Now, I chalk marked that uh, stocking lining outline stitching so that you could see it really well in the photo uh, because, you know, this denim fabric is very dark. So not only did I chalk mark it, but that is my seam allowance line, okay? So I've got my stocking stitching, which is very hard to see, and then I gave it a half inch seam allowance. You could give it a quarter inch, three eighths, whatever you're more comfortable sewing. Mark your seam allowance with that chalk so that you know where to cut out your piece. Then we're going to use that as our pattern to also cut a back pattern piece as well as two lining pieces. So we're going to have four stockings all together and you wanna make sure to have a front and a back of both the lining and your outer fabric. So you need to reverse that pattern uh, to cut all of those pieces. Oh, and here is me creating that hanging loop. So I just took a strip of fabric folded the long edges toward the center to meet in the center, gave it a good press, then folded it again and top stitched along both sides to secure my little hanging loop. All right, so now you place your hanging loop on one of your outer stocking pieces and you just place it towards the outer edge corner inside of that seam allowance line. And you can pin it, tack it, baste it in place. So now we have our front stocking, our front lining, our back stocking, our back lining. And you can see I have sewn across those upper edges and then pressed them open flat. And there's our hanging loop that has gotten caught in the stitching along the stocking back, and so we're ready to assemble this together. All right. And give it a better press than I did. <laughs> Whoopsies. Okay. I'm losing my place in my photos. Here we go. All right, so now you will place both of those pieces right sides together. So your outer stocking and back stocking are facing and your lining front and lining back are facing. And it's gonna look like two stockings um, in almost like a C shape, right? And we're going to sew the entire perimeter and leave about a five inch opening along the lining straight edge so that we can turn it right side out.
So this is my little opening that I have in the lining. Then we're going to turn everything right side out basically twice, okay? So you'll sew your opening closed in the lining and you'll have this really long, strange looking duo stocking. You'll shove your, uh, you'll turn everything right side out and then you will shove the lining into that outer uh, stocking. So here I am kind of just top stitching that opening shut in the lining. You can hand sew it if you prefer. You can just machine sew it. It's a little, little um, seam. No one's ever going to see it because it's in the inside of the stocking. There's a little bit bigger picture so you can see we've got our lining and then our outer stocking and we're going to push that lining into the outer to have really nice enclosed seams with nothing exposed. So there I am pushing the lining into the outer stocking and then you can top stitch this upper edge if you want. I just left it like it was. Um, but you can add a little bit of top stitching if you want that to be nice and flat. I just gave it a good press and I thought it was good to go. All right. And there you have it. A pretty little stocking. Isn't it cute? So you can obviously create the same type of stocking um, in the same way with having your, you know, lining piece. Here's that weird shape I was talking about. You can have your lining piece um, and your outer stocking. And then you could have kids decorate this with, um, you know, you could use some markers, some fabric markers or fabric paint. You could choose different designs, but who wouldn't want a Merry Chris Mouse design collection? And I thought I had imported all the different mice um, into today's Facebook Live, uh, but they are on the blog post. So you can head on over to the blog and you can see all 10 designs. Like I said, there's a girl mouse, a boy mouse, a Santa mouse, um, a mouse holding a different present. Um, they're just so, so cute. And I love the little mouse theme. Again, I think this would make a very, very cute little pet stocking as well. Um, so, you know, what's cuter than a little mouse stocking for a cat, really? So here we go, today's freebie and also brand new product at sulky.com. The, the embroidery collection is a $40 value and this entire product is $39.99. So you're essentially getting this entire embroidery collection for free. Uh, so it's a great value and you're gonna need all these threads, like I said, to create this collection. It does use a lot of thread, so keep that in mind. All right. Let's go ahead and answer some more questions. If you do have questions, put them in the chat. And let's, let's see. All right. Lori wants to know, oh, Lori says, there is a sale on Sulky that has a stabilizer kit, etc. Yes, we've got a sale going on right now. The The Chris Mouse collection is not part of the sale because it's already just a screaming deal and we're just launching it. Um, but we do have some specialty kits on sale right now. We've got some starter packs, things like that, some, some slim lines full of thread. So it's a great opportunity to fill up your cart with all of that good stuff. Grab your Chris Mouse embroidery palette get your Filmoplast slitting pin for sure, grab up your webinar kit, excuse me, your video cast kit so that you have it on hand when we do the video cast next week. Be sure to register for that, everybody. And, and grab your, you know, font collection. That scripty font would look great on a stocking or a monogrammed gift idea. Um, they're just, it's just a great, great design collection. All right. Jean is asking, 
is one set of threads enough? So one set of threads is enough to create each design in the collection, all 10 of the mice and the gifts and the Christmas trees, all right? So if you wanna stitch out multiples, grab up additional machine embroidery palettes, and that way you've got all the threads on hand that you need and you can work your way through the designs. And we, have, we did include some multiples of some of the colors that are used most often. You'll see there's two reds in there and two of the grays because you'll be using a lot of those to build the mice and the little clothes and things like that. Um, so keep that in mind. Also, once you get your, um, or you can view the color chart for this, um, if you need assistance with that and you wanna grab up additional spools to stitch out lots and lots of mice for assembly line gift ideas and that type of thing, just reach out to us and we'll let you know. You know, you can go into the description of the um, machine embroidery palette and every single thread is listed that is inside. So you can grab up the palette and then grab additional spools of the rayon um, and it's all there for you to view. Okay, Debbie says, can you add the link to get the thread and designs? So the link to that is the Merry Chris Mouse Machine Embroidery Palette. It is in the description of the post. You can head right on over to sulky.com and you will find it. How do I get the design for the stocking? So the design for the stocking, the outline, which is the lining stocking design, that is linked in the blog post. So also in the description of the post, head on over to the Sulky blog. I linked directly to the Merry Chris Mouse stocking post and you can grab up that lining design. If you do want the little mice, that is with purchase of the machine embroidery palette. So that's where you, you find it. That's where you find everything. <laughs> All right, Gail says, Christmas is almost here. I need to get to making these. I know it's gonna sneak up on all of us now that Halloween is over and you know Thanksgiving's gonna happen tomorrow and we're gonna be like, oh my gosh, we didn't get a head start on our Christmas gifts. What are we gonna do? <laughs> so what size needle? Great question. So for this project, I used a 9014 embroidery needle. Now with the sulky rayon thread, you can also use an 8012 needle. The reason I used the 9014 is because my fabric was a little thicker. Okay, it's this it's this stretchy kind of heavier weight denim. And so using that 9014 just worked better for my fabric. So I linked to uh, the Oregon Embroidery Assortment Pack that we have at sulky.com. That gives you 70s, that gives you 90s, so you can embroider with uh, lighter weight threads or heavier weight threads. And I just like to grab up assortment packs because then I have some different sizes based on you know different fabrics and techniques that I'm doing. All right. Can the thread be used for quilting too? Certainly. We work with MJ Kinman a lot. She's a award-winning quilter. She is the designer behind the birthstone quilt blocks, the gem quilts. She creates beautiful gems out of fabric and thread. They're amazing. She loves to quilt with sulky rayon thread because it gives a nice sheen. It's a nice weight. The thread is just beautiful and it makes her gems really come to life. So you can definitely use sulky rayon thread for quilting. Um, and depending on what the back of your quilt looks like, whether you want to use uh, the same thread in the bobbin or a lighter weight thread in the bobbin, uh, both of those will give you a nice balanced stitch and just practice, pra you know, make a tiny quilt sandwich, practice the quilting that you want to do use a spool of rayon next to a spool of polydeco, next to a spool of maybe 30 weight cotton, and then you can see the differences up close and personal and see what you want for the quilt that you're making. 
Doris says, does the anti-glue needle come in a 90? I'm just going to double check to make sure that I tell you the correct answer to that. All right, the anti-glue is a 7511. 7511 size, that's what we have at sulky.com. And, you know, let me see here. The 7511, you can use that needle with a rayon thread. Now, it's going against, you know, what I just said about using the 9014 and the 8012. However, my tip for choosing the right needle is to take your needle before you ever put it onto your embroidery machine or sewing machine. Take your needle, take your intended thread, and thread that needle before it's ever even on the machine. This way, you can see it right in front of your face. You are not trying to look, uh, trying to look at that small, tiny little space you know, above your embroidery. Now, what I'm doing is I'm trying to thread a 7010 universal needle with a 30 weight uh, polystar thread. I cannot even get it into the needle hole. So, done. I already know that needle's not going to work with that thread, and I didn't even have to put it on my machine or make any adjustments. Now, here is a 50 weight cotton thread. And again, I'm showing this on a 7010 universal needle. Go ahead and thread that needle and then run the needle across the length of thread. Now, this is gliding pretty good. It sticks a little tiny bit, but it's gliding pretty good. I would say this 7010 would work well with the 50 weight cotton thread. I may even want to go up to the 7511 or an 8012 needle. So that is my sort of needle and thread test. For those of you that have heard me uh, say that a million times, I apologize. <laughs> but for anybody new, it's a really great way of determining what needle is going to work with your thread. And always double check that your needle doesn't have any burrs on it, that it's not slightly bent. Sometimes there can be something on here that you cannot see um, when it's in your machine already. So you need to take it out, run your finger across it, make sure it's not uh, scratchy or has any issues. And if you're if you can't remember the last time you changed your needle, it's time to change your needle for sure. Okay. Lori wants to know what other fabrics would you use? For this stocking, you could use a quilting cotton. You could even go up to a canvas fabric. Um, it's really forgiving. Um, since the design has so many stitches on it and you're layering a bunch of applique fabrics on it, a little bit heavier fabric weight is gonna be great. But if you add that additional stabilizer, the, um, the um, oh my gosh, it, it left my brain. The, <laughs> the additional stabilizer that is our fusible tearaway stabilizer, um, that's going to add, you know, that's going to be like your interfacing, right? So you can go a little bit lighter weight on the fabric and leave that on your front uh, stocking piece as an additional interfacing. So adding thread weight so that it will support those stitches and the additional fabrics that you're adding for the applique. Kelly wants to know, what is the tool you talked about in the beginning? It may have been this Filmoplast slitting pen, um, also known as the Sticky Plus slitting pen. So when you hoop your 
sticky plus and you want to reveal that sticky adhesive, you will slit the paper inside of your inner hoop ring to remove it. And this little tool allows you to slit the paper without going through the layers. So you, you will do this inside of the hoop ring, but I'm just gonna show you outside. I can score it and then lift up that paper very easily and remove it to reveal that stickiness. So this is just a really great tool. If you were to use scissors or a pin, because you need some kind of sharp utensil for this, you can see slitting this with scissors, I can go right through, and I just did, I can go right through the, the sticky part and my outer paper, and then I've got a hole in my stabilizer. So I don't know what it is about this pen, but it allows you to have a really light hand and it goes right through the paper without uh, perforating the rest of your stabilizer, which you need to be intact. And that is at sulky.com. You can look up slitting pen. Um, I have to really enunciate when I say that word <laughs> and you'll find it. All right. Love the threading test, great idea. Yes, I learned that from Sue Hausman. Back when I was the host of Sew It All on PBS, Sue Hausman came from Sulky at the time and she showed me that tip on camera and I was blown away. I was like, how did I not do this before? It's brilliant. So I really, really um, credit her <laughs> for that tip. I think it's just, it's, it's a great tip for sewers of all all skill levels um, to learn that tip about choosing the right needle. Okay, wanna make sure we are addressing everyone's question. That's what we're here for, is to come together. And I apologize for not having my chat up earlier, but we're getting through it, okay. Elizabeth wants to know, would a velveteen fabric work for the stocking? Sure, that would be beautiful. Now, when you are working with velveteen or any fabric that has a nap to it, so a fuzzy surface, you wanna make sure, first of all, that both sides of your stocking are cut in the same direction. You don't wanna cut one this way and the other one this way because your velveteen or your velvet could actually look like two different colors. And that's because the nap needs to go in the same direction, so when the light hits it, it looks like it's the same color front and back. Um, also, you wanna use a topper. A topper is a film-like stabilizer, either water-soluble or heat-soluble. In this case, I would go water-soluble if your velveteen can handle water. Um, if the fabric cannot handle water without getting spots, you would do a heat-removable. Um, you'll want a topper so that your stitches sit on top of the fabric surface and don't sink into that fabric pile, okay? So you'll place your Sulky Solvi topper on top of that velveteen, do your entire stitch out, tear away most of the Solvi that you can around the design, anything that's left over, you can dab your stitching line with like a wet cotton swab and release the rest of the Solvi. You don't have to immerse the entire project in water to remove it. You can simply just run a wet cotton swab around that stitching line to release it and remove it. So make sure you get the additional stabilizer if you're working with a plush fabric or anything that has a nap like that. Okay. Barb says, what is that stabilizer's name? Are we talking about the topper? If so, that would be the Sulky Solvi. And if you want a heat removable, it's just heat away, Sulky heat away. And if you're talking about the sticky stabilizer, that is the Sulky Sticky Plus, Sticky Plus. All right. Joanne loves the heat removable stabilizers. They're so great, so great. 
Okay. I think we are, oh, I think we are caught up. Okay. Caught up on the question. Sorry. <laughs> My chat is giving me problems today. All right. Lori says, Sulky Rayon is beautiful for machine embroidery and so many wonderful colors. Yes, it is. And I just absolutely love this brand new machine embroidery palette. If you're unfamiliar, we have a lot of machine embroidery palettes. Um, I think now we've got five that are kind of Christmas or holiday related. There's a holly embroidery palette, comes with these beautiful holly embroideries. Uh, we've got one that is just our Merry Christmas palette, and it comes with um, some lettering designs that say Noel um, in a pretty scripty font and some snowflakes. There's a group of about 10, I think, snowflakes that you can do in metallic thread, and the metallic is included with the other colors in that machine embroidery palette. There's a poinsettia machine embroidery collection, and that one's really, really pretty large scale poinsettia designs and corner designs that would be great on pillows and things like that. So you can really have fun with these machine embroidery palettes. They come with the embroidery designs that go with all of those thread colors that you need to have on hand for your holiday decorating and holiday projects. So I hope you enjoyed today's little lesson on in the hoop machine embroidery applique. And I hope you all go out and make some stockings today that are personalized for your pets or your people. And we will be going through lots more holiday projects as the weeks and next month or so goes on. So keep joining me on So What and let me know what you want to see in the comments below so that I can tailor the content to your needs. And please, please, please sign up for our video cast. The link is in the description and I wanna see you all there. I'm really excited about this platform and bringing you this great, great Sally Tomato bag design. So we can all sport our new bags for fall and winter together. So can't wait to see what you all create and I will see you all next time.